Hey, good morning, everybody. Um, welcome to our July OpenMRS mini community meeting. We're really happy to have you here. Um, I'd really like to, um, to, uh, for us to get started and have everybody introduce yourselves. Um, I'm just gonna set up a Mentimeter, um, a Mentimeter for us to use. And you can just type your name in using the code in, your, in, your, in the chat that I'm gonna set up in just a second. And, um, and we can get going this morning. So welcome, um, let's introduce yourselves say you know who you are where you are from um and um and we're looking forward to, to seeing everybody in the room So if you're new to Mentimeter, all you have to do is go to www.menti.com, use the code 24407458, and you should be able to just type in your name and tell us where you're from. Welcome, Brian from Kenya. Juliet, good to see you here. Hi, Burke. Hi, Ellen. I know we have more for more than four people here. We're edging up towards 40 at the moment. Who else is here? The chat, the code is in the chat. Uh, we have Baptiste. Welcome, Baptiste from Rwanda, and Kelvin from Kenya, Sarichi from Nepal. Great. Todd, Herbert, Tanina, Ian. Wonderful to see, see so many people here. Jonathan, great. I think we have Hadija here as well. Savello, great. Gift from Tanzania, welcome. Wonderful to have everybody here today. Well, we have a pretty full agenda. So um, I'm gonna, I encourage you as, as you come into the room to also introduce yourself in the chat. Um, but let's, let's go ahead and, and get started. So this is our second um, community meeting for the for the year. I can't believe that it's already we're already halfway through um, through July, um, halfway through 2021. It's gone by really really quickly, um, and every day I see a little bit more evidence of how our community is actually just living our, our values. And there are a couple of, of them that keep coming back to mind. So for instance, I see, you know, we're community driven and we're user-centered. And I really hope that you'll see how this meeting um, 
reflects these two particular values in, in a couple of different ways. So let me just start with, with this first. So we, we want um, our community to be a safe place where people can raise concerns, discuss failures, improve existing ideas, and solve problems. And um, this community meeting is one of those spaces. So we, those, those, everybody here in this room, we make that safe space happen. Um, so this is where I want to try another Mentimeter experiment um, and see if, if, you know, we've all been through so many Zoom meetings. Um, I, I'd like us to kind of share what we think are um, some of the, some of the best, you know, kind of tips that we want, we want everybody else in this meeting um, to follow in a, in a Zoom meeting. So I'm going to stop my video share for a moment and we'll go to a different Mentimeter um, code. And just, you know, as I'm going to this new Mentimeter screen, just, just think, of, think a little bit about um, what are some of the tips and tips that you would, or the, the norms or rules that you want everybody in the room today um, to follow during, during our meeting today. So I'm gonna copy the, the link again, I'll share it in the chat and um, just type in the, in, the, in the box once you put the code in and tell us what, what are your, what are the, what are the norms that you would like to follow here in this meeting this week? So you can see my, you should be able to see my screen. The code is in the chat. Um, what is your favorite virtual meeting norm? Just go to www.menti.com and use the code 18439964. What are some of the things that you're expecting other people in the room to do? Sometimes even it's good to be reminded even of the obvious ones. Contribute actively. That's one of my favorites and I'm so glad that it came up first. Be present, yes. Be present, give feedback. Oh, that is such an excellent, excellent um, norm to, for us to follow. Um, this where, where people are going to be sharing a lot of things. Some of them are just ideas. Some of them are a little further along. Your feedback makes whatever they're working on a little bit better. Taking some notes, yep, fantastic. These are all really good, really good tips. New voices and ideas are welcome, exactly. You, you may be a new here, but your perspective is also new. We, you might share something that we haven't thought of or seen before. So if you're new, please speak up. Do not multitask. That goes right along with being present. Um, yep, give feedback and new ideas. These are great. Remain muted unless talking. That's also a really good one, um, especially I know it's, it can be hard if people are on the phone. Um, and you're, sometimes you call in and, and it automatically puts you off, off of mute. You know, once you join in, if you're not already muted, just put your mic on mute. And if you're calling in from a, a cell phone, please don't put us on hold or we'll end up with your hold music. Switch off, switch off the mic, share reaction. Oh, switch off the mic, except the speaker, yep. Share reactions to keep the conversation going. Wonderful. I knew you guys would have all the, all the great ideas. Fantastic. Fantastic. So um, I really hope that, that in this, in the, during this meeting that we'll, we'll all be able to, you know, keep these, keep these um, norms in mind. Um, and 
I'm just going to go back to our back to our presentation. Um, and then, you know, I want to kind of follow up on that that point we had about feedback, um, because that's also about being community driven, right? So all of those great ideas are coming from everybody in this room who might be coming from a different country, a different perspective. They have you all have different talents. Um, and and part of what makes our community so powerful is that all of your different perspectives, your different experiences come together and help us innovate and make stronger, stronger um, product, stronger documents, just everything that comes out of our community is the better for it. So let's let's go into our actual um, presentations or like what's actually gonna be happening today and a little bit tomorrow. Um, because we have a very wide variety of presentations and showcases planned for, for the next two days. Um, you know, some of the squads and implementers that you'll hear from today are going to be presented, presenting work um, that perhaps they started showing back in December when we had our first virtual meeting, um, maybe in April. So it may seem like they're presenting maybe the same thing, but I really, you know, I really encourage you to keep a careful eye out because I know that a lot of the work that people have been doing has actually um, evolved as a result of the feedback that they've gotten, not only from these mini community meetings, but also from the different squad meetings and conversations that they've had with so many different people, like many of you here. Okay. Um, so let's, let's take a look at our schedule. Uh, we're going to um, have a three, the 3.0 technical overview come up next. Um, and then we're going to have a user experience showcase. So usually we have squad showcases and implementer showcases. We still have a little bit of both, but we've just grouped them under some of the key themes that actually we think reflect what countries are prioritizing and what implementers need. So during that user experience showcase, You'll see a few showcases from squads who are working on solutions um, that will enhance the user experience. And we hope too that you'll, you'll hear some um, implementer showcases that will highlight the work that implementers are doing to perhaps extend some of the squad work in their settings and actually make, um, make these solutions come to life. So we've also in our schedule made a little bit more time for more breakout sessions. That was feedback that we had from the last meeting. So we'll have breakout sessions partway through, including a break, really necessary during these virtual meetings. Um, and then we'll have you know, very quick presentations of what happened during those discussions. And then we'll have our second showcase for today, a data exchange showcase. This will, fo this will focus on those squads and implementers who are really actively working on solutions that will enable data sharing um, between systems, between facilities and between countries. Um, again, this is something that, you know, we want to highlight how our, our community, how implementers are actively responding to the needs of the user, to the needs of countries. And then at three o'clock, we have a few lightning talks lined up um, before we go into our after action review. You know, I know that some of you might have gotten the, the meeting invite and gone, wow, this is a long time. Um, we worked in some extra time into the schedule in case anybody decided along the way that they wanted to do a lightning talk um, or an implementer showcase. So if you are inspired to do a lightning talk on user experience or data exchange or tomorrow on professional development or the implementer experience, um, or if you want to do an implementer showcase, please let myself or Christine know so that um, we can find the right time for you and we know to hand the, the screen and the mic over to you at the right time. So um, with that, I, I, wanna, I want us to just dive in and get started um, with our first session of the day. Um, and I'm gonna turn things over to Grace for the 3.0 framework technical overview. This is, you know, I'm really excited about this presentation because it's got lots of new things in it um, since, since people may have seen it in April. So Grace, can I, turn, can I turn the mic over and the screen over to you? Absolutely, thanks so much, Jess. I'll go ahead and, oh, I'll, there we go. I will just try to share my screen. 
Okay, everyone should be seeing a slide that says OpenMRS 3.0 Framework Technologies and Vision. Is that what you're seeing? That's what we're seeing. Excellent. Well, let's dive in. So over the next 45 minutes, we are going to have a variety of speakers show you a variety of things. And here's what we're going to go through. <clears throat> we're going to do a quick recap of what we've been talking about since the last community meeting uh, in April. We talked about some, we talked through some basic building blocks of OpenMRS 3.0, but there's a lot more that's been added since. We're going to do a quick recap, but then we're going to actually jump ahead. You know how often you sit on Zoom calls and you're waiting, you're waiting for the exciting demo parts? Well, this time we're going to start with some of the exciting demo parts. And three organizations are going to show us quite promptly what you could see if you were able to just um, flip a switch and see your own EMR data with this new 3.0 front end. Then we're going to talk more about the details. What is OpenMRS 3.0? What are all the pieces, the building blocks of the framework? That's why I've got Lego pieces on, on the slide here, because this is really all about building blocks and Lego pieces, all of the tools and conventions that come together to form 3.0. So we'll talk through that. And then we'll wrap up uh, with a bit of discussion about, well, what is the future going to look like for RefApp 2.x? And finally, Pay attention in the slides because we're going to end this talk with a quiz competition and uh, everyone will have an opportunity to participate. Uh, the winner will win uh, lots of fame <laughs> and uh, keep an eye out for these hints throughout the slide deck as they'll help you in this final quiz competition. Well, let's get started with a recap of what we talked about in April. So we talked about how uh, the journey for us as OpenMRS has been that our technology started out as being highly modular and between different organizations, there, there was generally shared um, ways of structuring both the back end and the front end. However, over time, for really good reasons, many organizations chose to create their own uh, bespoke or custom front end. And this has resulted in a growing divide between our different organizations' technologies. So, uh, as many of you remember, quite a long time ago, I guess it was in 2012 or so, we had the 2.x RefApp project uh, come out the door. And uh, now here we are in 2021, working on the 3.x front end. And that involves, um, again, some shared conventions and also a 3.0 reference application. And it's definitely worth mentioning that in that time, we've seen really impressive initiatives like the Bomni product, uh, arise and, and those deserve a, a, a shout out for the work that they've done and the scale they've reached. But where are we going from here? Well, um, look, I, you are here in the present along with me and I recognize that for the next several years, we will still have users of the 2.x ref app and that's okay. But it's the 3.x front end that we wanna be able to focus on as a community moving forward uh, as much as appropriate. Why is that though? Well, in April, we talked about this common concern that we hear from folks using OpenMRS or, or developing with it or implementing with it, that they're duplicating efforts. And one of those reasons was because um, folks couldn't share front end features at all. And so we wanted a framework that would allow folks to work together seamlessly between organizations. We wanted to modernize our tech stack. We wanted to make it easier for implementations to make um, incremental improvements so that you're not really afraid of doing front-end feature releases that your clinicians need because of all the things that might break if you do a quick front-end release. We also are aware of a um, rising global talent pool of developers who are getting more and more comfortable in JavaScript frameworks and other modern front-end development uh, skills. And we wanna tap into that global pool. We wanted to ensure interoperability and finally, but perhaps most importantly, this really all comes down to clinicians and we wanted to focus more on their user experience. And we'll come back to that. So as many of you have seen, here's the sneak preview of our 3.0 um, reference application. And now without further ado, uh, oh, and you can actually see the full demo at this site address, but we are going to get more of a demo of that shortly. The main takeaway is that the 3.0 framework is like a collection of tools and shared conventions that will together help prevent development duplication and also promote collaborative work so that we can do more together. 
And I, um, I want to publicly call out with thanks and recognition several organizations who really were like founding members and core development members uh, that got us to the place where we are today. So a big thanks to these organizations that have been really critical in um, setting up the micro front end squad and leading us towards this framework overall. And many others have been involved as well, but a special shout out to these organizations. So let's dive into the sneak peek. What if we could see our own EMR data in the 3.0 front end? And the key takeaway here is that using your existing backend and database, it's possible to introduce 3.x front end gradually and to see real data in the 3.x view. So let's see this for real, uh, starting with AMPAS. So I'm going to call out, actually I'm gonna start with Partners in Health because I have the video queued up to go and then I will call on our, our colleagues at AMPAS. Um, so here I'm about to show you a video looking at the same patient in the current Partners in Health EMR and then what happens when we switch over to 3.0. Well, I'm a bit of a spoiler there. So I'm gonna go ahead and uh, share that full screen and make sure that I'm sharing my audio. Okay. Hi, I'm Brandon S. Dennis, and I'd like to demonstrate interlinking from the 2.x reference application to the micro frontends application. In the Partners in Health EMR, we've added a general action which links from any patient's patient chart to the micro front end version of that patient chart. It uses the a custom nav bar, which is supposed to emulate the uh, reference application nav bar. Um, we're going to be replacing that with the default microfronts and snap bar, at least for this patient chart page uh, within, the, within the near future. That's all. Hi. Well, thanks to Brandon from Partners in Health for that visual overview. It's really exciting to see that coming together. And if you'd like to re-see that video, I will um, post a link to the YouTube clip in the chat. But next, let's look at another organization. Let's uh, hand things over to AMPA. So I'm going to stop sharing my screen and I'm going to invite Eric Attila uh, from the AMPA team to show uh, how this is looking for the AMPA medical record system. Over to you, Eric. Thank you, Grace. Uh, my name is Eric, as Grace has mentioned, from AMPA. And uh, I'll quickly display how we are trying to make uh, the 3.0 front end uh, framework to customly work on top of the AMPATH uh, database. So I'll share my screen. I don't know if uh, you people can be able to see my screen. Yes, yes, perfectly. Thank you. So this is our, uh, our, our production environment at AMPATH and uh, currently, uh, we have a HIV summary, which is very important uh, to some uh, most of our uh, most of our users. And uh, part of uh, the initial stages of work that we've done uh, while implementing the 3.0 framework at Ampal was uh, starting with the HIV summary. So this is how the HIV summary looks like in our production environment at Ampal in POC. So I'll dive into the 3.0 framework where we have a similar HIV summary being uh, represented using the 3.0 framework. So I'll show that as well. So this is how it is displayed in the 3.0 framework, uh, putting in mind that uh, we are sharing the same database. Uh, yeah, so this is one of the improvements that we've done on our HIV summary on the 3.0 framework. Thank you, Grace. Thank you, Eric. It's really cool to see uh, the summary coming to life um, for, for the same patient uh, between the systems just like that. 
thanks so much for organizing that demo for us. And then last but certainly not least, uh, I'd like to call upon Itzin from the uh, ORI and UCSF team to show us what it looks like to change our backend to show uh, the database that we have in 3.0. Over to you, Itzin. Thanks, Grace. Okay, so let me show the screen. Um, okay. So, um, so what what I'm going to show is like I will show uh, actually the code um, like. If you want to change, this is a, a, a question that we we, we had um, working with the uh, Nigeria team. Uh, so, like, how can I uh, connect to <clears throat> to my my backend? I won't show like how to how the deployment works. If you want to de like deploy this, and that's just showing how you can quickly on on, on if you want to like to test uh, your your existing backend with um, OpenMRS 3.2, how you can do it uh, on on the development environment. So basically. Um, oops, sorry. Uh, so basically, to start the micro front ends, you can just uh, run npm start, and by default, <coughs> it will load uh, the, the the micro front ends using the OpenMRS um, backend. But if you have your own cost, custom or you have your um, uh, your backend, you can just point to 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 your backend. So. I'll start now my um, my environment with uh, uh, our uh, backend, which is already dev. So if I start like this, um, what happens actually is that um, actually I didn't share my whole screen. Let me just do that. Sorry, one second. Yeah. So as I was saying. Um, it will start using the the backend uh, of all the dev. So I'll, I'll make just a, 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 a quick query on on uh, for patient. Okay, it's taking long. Maybe it's my internet. Okay. So as you can see, you can all see here the locations I have. I only have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay, I'll choose this one. Uh, you go and search for like. A patient, John. As you can see, I only um, find one patient because I'm using the um, the Ori Dev backend. So let me just uh, switch to use. Um, oh, I know it does this. Just again, start. So if I do this, means that I'm now using the the um, the Open Spa backend. So as you can see, I'm still in, on local host. Bear with me, my internet is a bit slow. Let's just give him some help. Sometimes works. Um, yeah, so as you can see, even the locations, uh, they change it. I have commit here down when I was using the other backend. You just choose this. Um, and then if I look for John, um, as you can see, I get more results. So basically, this is the idea of like, you can quickly switch. So yeah, I'm seeing patients now from another backend. So I can I can actually do um, the same thing uh, for any like available backend as long as I have the credentials and um, some of the um, uh, backend dependencies I met like fire. And, and so let me just go to one patient and I show you that as you can see, I don't have all those menus that um, the AMPAF colleague was showing. This is just something that we have for, for Ori, which we call HTS sessions and yeah, and I will be uh, showing this more on when I do my showcase. Thanks, Chris. Over to you. Thank you, Utsin. It's really exciting to see this coming together. And um, if, if you're watching some of this for 
uh, the first time and, and you're thinking, wow, um, what, what do I take away from this? Don't worry, we're going to show you more demos later. So you're gonna have lots of visual exposure to these things. And the key takeaway here again is that using your existing backend and database, it's possible to introduce 3.x frontend gradually and to see a real data in the 3.x view, either by switching over your front end or by switching the, the backend uh, linkage. So I know that was a whirlwind tour, and now we're going to go through step by step all of the Lego building blocks that contribute to this 3.0 framework. Is everyone seeing an orange slide right now? Yes. Yeah, sure, I do, Chris. Wonderful, thank you. All right, well, people always ask me, what is OpenMRS 3.0? And it's a great question um, because there's lots of pieces to it. So let's dive into that. I'm gonna show you uh, a diagram. We're gonna build it together right now. And there are three different things we're gonna walk through. I'm gonna show you the structure of 3.0. We're gonna talk about the key building blocks. And then at the end of this presentation, I'll mention a couple of emerging ideas that we're still figuring out, but that you might wanna be aware of. So uh, first of all, in this 3.0 overview, we have a framework, and this is kind of like the foundation for everything that we're building uh, for our 3.0 reference application. Uh, so yeah, our, our reference application depends on that framework and foundation. And in that ref app, there's kind of two main um, folders, if you will. Uh, there's the baseline features, things that you would typically expect, like you know, um, patient registration, uh, patient search, you know, staple features like that. But then there's a new idea that we're still unpacking called packages. And we're going to talk about that more, don't worry. So this is, uh, again, the visual of how our 3.0 reference application is looking so far. And we'll talk about that more. On top of all this, at the very top layer is the distribution. So the idea is that you take your distribution, you go through some kind of process to create it and customize it. You might use everything that's in the reference application, or you might choose to use only a couple things. You might pull in your own content. You might tweak some things. Um, but the point is that at the end of the day, you create your own distribution on top of all of this. So uh, at the very bottom, our major building block, now that we've looked at the structure of this, the major building block is, of course, the OpenMRS platform. That's not changing. Um, in fact, a key takeaway is that you can use OpenMRS 3.0 alongside your existing implementation. You only need to make sure that you have Platform 2.1. So don't worry, there's no Platform 3.0 yet, uh, and nor do we plan there to be. In fact, 2.5 is the one that's coming out next. So common confusion, there's no Platform 3.0. Um, 3.0 is more the language we use to talk about the REF app and this overall framework. Um, so on top of that platform, we've been working on the Fire API. Uh, some of you already know about this, some, some don't, so I'm going to mention it again. The goal of our Fire API is easier integration and data exchange. We're trying to move away from the very bespoke standards that have been created in the past to follow HL7 Fire's uh, internationally shared guidance about how health information should be exchanged. Um, so right now, our Fire 2 module already maps OpenMRS uh, the OpenMRS data model to what systems are expecting for FHIR. That means that you can export data into a FHIR format to be used by other systems that are expecting to intake FHIR. This is a major uh, interoperability achievement. So kudos to the FHIR squad that's been continuing to work on that. On top of this, we have the work that the micro front end squad has been working so hard on this building block of plug and play front end architecture that draws heavily from modern web development. Uh, the idea with micro front end is that you effectively sandbox your code teams and enable them to work independently on features, but the framework brings that work together and thus reduces duplication of front end development. So uh, how in, in April, we looked at how this example was built uh, using micro front end. And uh, so uh, in the background, you've got these slots that are hiding there, waiting to expect widgets and applications that say, hey, I'm a, um, well, let's give an example. I'm a patient summary widget or extension. 
And so you should show me both in the navigation, because I need a navigation item for myself, and you also need to show me in the body here. Uh, but you can also pull in other widgets from your own organization or from other organizations. You don't have to rely solely on community widgets that are already available. So that's the beauty of the micro front end framework in a very quick nutshell. Moving right along, the next key building block in our 3.0 framework is a shared UX framework. And by UX, I mean user experience, not just UI, but also user experience. Uh, so what we're going for is a professional, modern user experience that's faster for designers and devs to work with and has a consistent look and feel. So in April, we talked in more detail about why we chose a third party design system called Carbon Design, uh, because we wanted to optimize the limited resources of uh, designers and developers. Uh, it's lower cost to go with a third party design system. And finally, user experience. Users are expecting a consistent professional front-end UI in healthcare, and we really want to provide that. Uh, so we also talked in April about the different process and steps that we went through to evaluate different options of style guides and design systems and how we arrived at Carbon. The key takeaway here in this building block is that we're using Carbon moving forward and because we want a shared design system that enables the reuse of design and components. And I'll show that more later. The next key building block is something called uh, the implementer tools or config tools. And uh, the idea is that you have low tech configuration that you can use to, test, uh, to configure your EMR based on your site's needs. So in April, again, I did a more detailed demo showing this, but just to recap, um, in this example, me as a non-technical person, I was able to go in and say, well, gee, for this particular implementation, I don't actually want them to see things like uh, system administration, configure metadata, uh, data management, for example. Uh, I only want my admin users to be able to see that in another site, for example. So I went ahead and I used the config tools to uh, hide those things that I didn't want my users to uh, see. And uh, a couple of clicks later, that config was all done through these config tools. The next key building block is metadata management. This is a common problem that many of you have faced um, over the years. It's so painful to put together your, your dictionary and then manage it. Um, so this block, concept management tooling, is captured by a new tool called the, oh, I actually haven't updated the, <laughs> name here, but it's called the Dictionary Manager. Previously, we named it OCL for OpenMRS, but that was a confusing name. The Dictionary Manager is a new online web application that anyone can use, and it, it enables you to manage concepts more easily for OpenMRS. And uh, very soon today, we're going to see a detailed demo uh, from the uh, OCL and Dictionary Manager squad explaining how to use this and how it makes it much faster to put your dictionaries together. <clears throat> the next key building block is making the deployment packaging simpler. We've also heard time and time again on our talk forum uh, and at conferences and, and many different forums that it, it's challenging to roll out OpenMRS. And so we're looking for ways to make it easier for everyone involved. Initializer is a tool that we're using that binds these things together, your metadata and how the uh, uh, deployment is packaged. So for example, you know, in the past with the 2.x REF app, we've had over 40 modules and um, all have had really good work and reasons for them. But for you at your implementation, you might think, you know, I really only need 20 of these. Why do I need the other 24? And then you're not sure if you can remove them because the dependencies aren't necessarily clear and you end up stuck with all this additional um, technical noise that, that you may not need. So part of what we've done is we've reduced the modules list substantially to the major core modules that are really needed for the front end. Uh, and then of course you can add on the other ones if you need them, that's fine. But it means you have fewer modules to worry about from the beginning. Initializer allows us to upload uh, all of the additional metadata needed um, to have your EMR ready to go. On top of this, uh, oh, let's talk a bit more about packages. 
this uh, kind of mystery word is still an idea and process. In fact, this, this entire diagram, uh, you'll see the word draft up here. We're really keen to hear your feedback. If there's something here you think doesn't make sense, needs to be explained more, we'd love to hear from you. I'd love to hear from you. Uh, so this idea of packages is a relatively new idea, but the idea is that a package is a set of functionality that meets end user requirements for a particular topic area um, or a particular disease area. So for example, we might have a reference application with the baseline registration, patient search, um, vital sign entry, all those features that you expect. But then you can also add in a package that includes the additional features concepts, forms, et cetera, that you need for a particular clinical area. So for example, an HIV package. I want all of the baseline features of the reference application, but I also want all of uh, the standard forms or concepts and widgets that I might need for HIV care. Can't you just give those to me in a clear package? That's what we hope to do. And whether it's HIV, COVID, maternal child health, TB, non-communicable diseases like diabetes and heart disease programs, we hope that this uh, way of talking about packages will help us to technically roll out content more easily and share it across implementation. And I'll talk a bit more about the roadmap for that. The key takeaway so far is that carbon design, micro front end architecture, and the tools to manage and package your metadata are some of the key components of the 3.x framework, at least technically. And then uh, to wrap up this overwhelming diagram, um, there are two final ideas that are still in the works. One is an idea of using a shared form schema going forward as much as we can. Uh, right now, we're not looking to force folks to use one particular form builder or form engine, but uh, there has been a really interesting idea brought up in the community lately of using the, uh, a shared schema. And that way, regardless of what form engine you are using, at least uh, you would be able to share the bulk of form work that someone else had done. So for example, let's say that you are currently um, using one form engine, but another organization or another site using a different form engine has a form that you would love to just use. It's a very similar program to yours. You might wanna make some tweaks. You don't have to rebuild, you don't want to rebuild the entire form. Using the same schema, you could literally copy paste that form schema, and then you would have 80% um, of the work, uh, uh, or content anyway, uh, done. The second idea that's still very much a work in progress is this idea of a directory. What's the process that I will go through as an implementer to find out what widgets are already available, what packages are available, whether there's some forms or dictionaries or features that I might like to add or configure to my distro, how do I find all of that? Of course, we've got the add-ons directory right now, but we would like to see a future where um, we have you know, add-ons 2.0 uh, that's more of a marketplace where you can easily find the front-end features that you need and also showcase your team's expertise or expertise from a squad. So for example, if a squad worked together on a really interesting, powerful widget, it would be nice for us all to be able to see that really easily. So that's the 3.0 overview in a nutshell. Um, some folks on the call today have been hearing a lot about something called ORI, which stands for the OpenMRS HIV Reference Implementation. And the way that we've been thinking about this is that the reference application, the 3.0 framework, this all forms the technical foundation of that key uh, uh, ORI work. The HIV specific content work going on for the uh, ORI uh, HIV reference implementation, we're thinking of that as a package. And I'll let Idsen in his demo shortly share with us more about how that looks when, when it all comes together in the actual um, implementation. But we're seeing ORI as an HIV reference package, although the future is even broader uh, from COVID, TB, and, and more. So more to come on that but this is where the package language becomes especially helpful to try to help us understand the difference between a package and a distribution. The couple of UX principles that I just wanted to call out for everyone, uh, with this whole new 3.0 direction that we're going in, there are a couple of key things we're trying to follow as far as user experience. 
first of all, we're trying to have a collaborative process. So every Monday we have a group of people and designers who get together to have collaborative design sessions. We talk about problems that the implementers are experiencing, things they're hearing from their users, uh, and we try to find overlap so that we can pool resources and work on those problems. And then every Thursday squad call at the micro front end squad, uh, any recent design work that's come out the door uh, gets, get, gets showcased there so that everyone interested is kept up to date. And finally, but probably most importantly, um, being user driven has been really mission critical. So throughout this process, we're regularly doing user interviews and user testing. So if you are a user or if uh, you have any users at your site who you would like to be exposed to 3.0 or give feedback, we would love to hear from you. The other um, neat thing to kind of just be aware of uh, if you are a community contributor is that we've been working to have a single hub for our design artifacts. And uh, it just so happens that we've chosen an online tool called Zeppelin. Zeppelin is an online design handover tool and it helps us in two major ways. Firstly, it gives us one place where we can host and share the designs that are ready for development. And it also gives us a comprehensive style guide with extensive components and dev guidance, CSS guidelines, and so on for all of the major um, features and patterns that are repeated throughout the application. And speaking of patterns, one of the most important UX conventions is simply the structure of the application. Um, there's also tablet-based guidelines. We've been tablet first in our design approach, so uh, desktop came after. But um, in general, one of the key considerations is keeping things as consistent as possible so that if I'm a user of a system that's using OpenMRS, where things are laid out will be consistent across uh, implementations, even though the content and the features may be different. What's on our roadmap? What's, what's coming next? Well, there are three major things that I wanted to point out. Number one, uh, we've been working really hard to get the online demo ready for end-to-end -end field testing in outpatient care. Uh, so August and September will be focused on uh, two to three different sites doing end-to-end -end field testing with clinicians in an outpatient setting. And then in September, October, we've got an outpatient clinic uh, lined up. Uh, MECOM's going to be rolling out this solution uh, real time. And then finally, as a community, we're hoping to rally around the technical specifications needed for packages. So we're already working on defining what would be in it, how it's wrapped like a zip file um, or a jar. But uh, the next things to go through are, well, how do you find the available packages? What tooling can we build to unzip that package for you? Um, and uh, anyway. So more to come on packages. If you're interested in this topic, stay tuned because uh, we need to have more discussions on this as a community. So, okay, that all sounds great, Grace, but what about maintaining 2.x? Uh, and I wanna come back to this diagram again. Um, we are not, uh, like, does this mean that the community will have two front-end solutions to maintain for the next few years? Oh well, yeah, it does. So what's our strategy to handle that? Well, number one, I wanna call out that the choice of what front end to use and when to use it, that choice is still with implementers. And it's okay if an implementation recognizes that they need to stick with 2.x for the next uh, while, that, that's all right. In the meantime, on the community side, we're going to be focused on automation, automation, automation when it comes to 2.x. So let me show you the exciting work that's been going on there. Um, thanks to our QA support team in the community, we've now got a live QA dashboard and you can actually go to it on GitHub at this link, which I'll share in the chat shortly. Uh, but you can go and you can see a number of automated tests that we've set up so that at any time you can kind of get a sense for uh, how, how trustworthy the platform, the 2.x ref app and the 3.x ref app are. So uh, there are two major ways that this, oh, so for example, uh, in 2.x, you'll be able to see things like, is search and registration doing okay? What about vitals and triage, clinical visit workflows, report generation, is that all working well? The reason that this is so helpful for us uh, with maintaining the 2.x ref app is that um, it makes the free release ref app testing much faster and more trusty. Uh, and it's easier to see problem areas. So for example, 
Um, if we were about to do a new 2.x release to, to cover some the maintenance and bug related fixes that had come up from the community, um, we could look at this dashboard and immediately see all these other things are passing. So we don't need to go in and, and do painful um, uh, manual testing, but we can see there's a problem in the vitals and triage features. So let's go figure out what that is. The, the second way that this helps us is that any PRs that are now made to the 2.x ref app will automatically run against these automated tests. Oh, sorry, I think my page just refreshed. Hopefully you can all still hear me. Wonderful, thanks, Andy. Uh, yeah, so all of these tests will automatically run if you do a PR to the 2.x ref, ref app. Um, and that means that as a developer, you get instant feedback if your contribution has accidentally broken something. Whereas in the past, not only were our uh, ref app releases requiring a substantial amount of manual testing that, that took time and uh, could delay the release, but also, sometimes we found that things had uh, been broken by a really, really old PR. And at that point, um, often if you went back to the contributor and asked for them to look at it again, um, they were no longer very active in the community. And so uh, it just created more problems. So um, this automation, automation, automation is one of our strategies for making it uh, relatively easy to maintain the 2.x press app moving forward. Uh, yeah, so key takeaway, this new QA framework and automation strategy enables continued support for the 2.x ref app maintenance releases with less effort while our focus on 3.x increases.